Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Now, I trust that you are feeling happy in Jesus this morning, that your attention is set upon the things of heaven and that your heart is filled with praise and joy. We are continuing our review through the book of Hosea, and the Almighty continues to plead with his people. He says in verse 4, O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? What must I do to get your attention? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud. In other words, I've showered my blessings upon you. Can you not see my hand in your life? And yet you continue to reject me. He says in verse 5, Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And thy judgments are as a light that goeth forth. In other words, you know my words, yet you refuse to obey. Your conscience is pricked. My spirit speaks to you. Why will you not hearken unto my cry? He says, I've desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. You see, there's something very interesting about the human being. We are inclined to religious practice. It seems almost as if it's natural that we cling and even more so we place too much emphasis on the things that we think are important to God. For the Jews, it was their burnt offerings. It was their sacrifices. For the Christian, it may be paying of tithes. It may be our prayer times. It may be the religious services that we attend. It could even be our Bible reading. And as we spoke yesterday, this is a relationship that we are in. And a relationship requires spontaneity. Always looking for an opportunity to do for God, to do for others. We could even say to surprise God, to surprise others. What we read here in chapter 6, verse 6, is that it's not what we do for ourselves. It's what we do for others. And so he says, I desired mercy and not sacrifice. I desire for you, my people, to be attentive to the needs of others. Yet you seem to focus only upon your own religious service and religious practice. And when we look at the lives of the Pharisees before Jesus, that's exactly the same problem that he was addressing. Now this is nowhere more clearly explained than in the book of Isaiah in chapter 58. God begins in verse 1 and he says, Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. They seek me daily. They delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. They say we have fasted. We have afflicted our soul. And God says in verse 4, You shall not fast as you have been fasting, to make your voice to be heard on high, this isn't the fast that I have chosen. In verse 6, the fast that I have chosen is to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens of others, to let the oppressed go free. Verse 7, to deal thy bread to the hungry, to bring the poor that have been cast out into thy house, to clothe the naked, you see, if your attention is upon others, then in verse 8, your light will break forth as the morning. Your health will spring forth speedily. Your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will follow behind you. You will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away from the midst of thee the yoke, putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity, if you draw out your soul to the hungry, if you satisfy the afflicted soul, 
Then your light will rise in obscurity and your darkness will be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought. He will make fat your bones and you will be like a watered garden, like a spring of water. In verse 13, he says, stop doing your own ways, finding your own pleasure and speaking your own words. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. And so basically the Almighty is saying, you creatures of earth are always complicating things because you are doing what you think is right. You are following your own ways, your own practices, and speaking your own words. But yet again, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. I desire the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. You act as if your traditions your religious practices bring me honor. And yet I want you to be spontaneous in your acts of kindness, looking for every opportunity to serve me through and by serving others. This is what Jesus meant when he said in Matthew 15, verse eight, this people draws nigh unto me with their mouth and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And because of this, in Matthew 7, he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And the will of the Father isn't so much as our religious duties, as important as those are, as long as they are kept in the right order among the list of priorities, but our priority, the will of the Father, is to love others as we would love ourselves. Jesus continues, many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils? Have we not done many wonderful works? Look at all the religious practices that we've involved ourselves in. Don't they count for something? And yet Jesus says in verse 23, then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. You knew me. You did what you thought was important to me. But if you were in a relationship with me, you would have allowed me to make myself known unto you, and then you would have truly known what was important to me. And because of this, depart from me, you that work iniquity. And so let me finish by just saying this, friends. There is such a fine line, a blurred line even, between what we are talking about today, because what we are speaking of is the difference between grace and works. And this has been an issue, a topic that the people of God have wrestled with since the days of our Messiah. It's so difficult for us to operate in works and yet stand in grace, knowing that we are required to do nothing, but we are commanded to do much. As James said, faith, which comes by grace, without works is dead. And yet here in our text, God places very little importance on the works and everything upon the grace that we offer to others. And so what we see in our text today isn't that God is telling them not to sacrifice, but mercy comes before the sacrifice. And so maybe this feeble example will help you better understand. If you were standing in a line to give your sacrifice to the high priest for the forgiveness of your sins, which is required by the commandment of God, and your neighbor stands next to you without a sacrifice because he is unable to provide one for himself, God would show more honor unto you by giving your sacrifice to your neighbor so that they can make their sacrifice, and you go without a sacrifice, thereby breaking the commandment. Because you have loved others as yourself. You've put others before yourself. Or as Jesus said, the commandment is to rest, no work on the Sabbath. But if you see your neighbor in need, just as if you saw your ox in the ditch, you will pull him out. You will do all in your power to help him, even though it appears you are breaking the commandment. God cares more about the person that you are helping and your act of love shown unto them than the commandment. 
Well, I know, friends, how hard it is to get our heads around this because I wrestle with this too. But it must be something that we understand because this is what identifies us as a true follower of the Lord Jesus. And so I pray today for you, as well as for myself, that the Holy Spirit will enlighten your mind to this simple yet very complex truth, and that you will begin to place more importance on the mercy than the sacrifice. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful again that you are here with us. I pray that your life is being changed by the Word of God, and that you are, as we have been commanded in 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, walking as Jesus walked when he was upon this earth. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.